kidding, of course. How many of you have had a moment to get out and wander around Cowslow? See your hands. Yeah? Okay. We're going to have a quick Q&A. Uh, I want to hear only good stuff. I don't want to hear any complaints that this lady snubbed me or the ravens have pooped on the hood of my car. Uh, tell me something good about Cowslow. It has to be from someone who's never been here before. Yeah, Cow. You have a violin shop. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Uh, he's talking about Instruments of Change, which is Canada's smallest and I think coolest music store run by Jeremy Bain. Exactly. Not just a violin shop, he makes other stringed instruments too. He is, of course, what do you call a person who does that kind of work? Luthier. Uh, Luthier, thank you very much. Okay, another nice comment about Kaslo? Yes, ma'am? Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for noticing. But, but what about, I know the men are, are attractive, but what about, <laughs> did you see the mountains and the lake and stuff too? <laughs> yes, sir. I bought some really cool wood trees at the farmer's market over there. Nice. Yeah, it was fun that they, our farmer's market just began last weekend. So that, next to nothing. Next to nothing. I'm sad to hear that. You're so damn cheap. I could, yeah, okay. That was before you got my $5. Yes, ma'am. I was in the Willow yesterday and bought a wonderful bedspread, beautiful quilts, wonderful service. Hey. Oh, that gives me the opportunity to say that you must have shopped at Willow Home Boutique. Absolutely. The most lovely little home decor shop in all of North America. Home. <laughs> yeah, probably home hardware. Not one here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any anybody else? Anybody go for a hike? Yeah. It's magical. You walk around the street, and every every shop, every house has just a little magical quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk by our house, obviously. <laughs> Okay, well here's my personal anecdote. My, my wife Janet, who works at Willow Home Boutique, the finest little sh uh, We moved here, where we, we, we came here just over nine years ago from Edmonton. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, but Janet, my wife, is a prairie girl. She's from Kansas. And so I put up with, with Edmonton, which is a wonderful city in many ways. I'm not slagging Edmonton at all. Uh, but it is uh, physically boring. I mean, it's the, the, you know what I'm talking about, the prairies, right? People from the prairies actually love that stuff, you know? Like, I had to put up for three and a half decades hanging around with people at parties who would just stand and sort of get all teary-eyed, staring off into the distance with their Molson Canadian in hand, and I'd, I'd walk up to them and look at them and then stare out at what they were staring at, and I saw nothing. <laughs> And I would finally ask, what are you staring at? They say, well, look at that sky. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. So, so nine years ago, I told Janet, that's enough. I, it's my turn now. We need mountains, water, and trees. We're going to British Columbia. And I remember I told her a tiny little town that I drove through 35 years earlier on my kind of slightly lost way to the bugaboos to go climbing. It's called, and luckily now we have the internet so I could type in a bunch of stuff that started with K-A because I couldn't quite remember the name. It's kind of complicated, you know. But I found it. So yeah, yeah, that's it. It's Cowslow. Let's go. So the first place we went to, because we were, you know, going to make some choices here, was Elkford. Is there anyone here from Elkford? <laughs> oh, thank God. Excellent. Has anyone been to Elkford? Oh, yeah. Okay, then you know, you, you'll understand why I'm about to say this. There's no town in Elkford. There are lots of snowmobiles and stuff in Elkford, but there's no, there's no front street. There's no center to this place. It's in a beautiful physical setting if you kind of do this and don't look at the coal slag heaps and stuff. So we decided, well, no, Elkford is not for us. And we came to Cowslow. And this was late March, and it was about 20 degrees Celsius. And we found ourselves on the patio of what was then called the Crooked Cafe. And now it's called the Bluebell Bistro, the restaurant that's provided us with the fantastic food and coffee and stuff. So Janet and I were on the, the 
lovely little patio there with a cold beer in the sun, late afternoon. And I was looking around and I turned to Janet and said, you know what, I, I, do, do you guys know the American TV series that appeared in the late 90s called Northern Exposure? You know that show? Okay, and it took place in the fictional town of Sicily, Alaska. This funky little isolated Alaskan town full of amazing characters, moose and bear wandering around on the streets, you know, even some aboriginal actors in this series. God forbid. And I turned to Janet and said, holy shit. If we move here, it's going to be like living on the set of Northern Exposure. <laughs> and that's exactly what Caslow is. It's, it's like Sicily, Alaska, but it's better because we're real. And every time I tell this to people from the States in particular who are familiar with the series, who've spent even one day here, they all nod enthusiastically. You're right, man. This is... Yeah, so the Kaslow Institute was really established to turn Kaslow into a living, breathing soundstage. Uh, and, and I would say this, and now I'm getting serious, that when, after nine years of living here, we've come to the conclusion, and it's one of the reasons we established the Kaslow Institute, that at the end of the day, and this is going to echo something that Corky said yesterday, our greatest assets in this province, in the rural sections of this province, which of course, in terms of land mass, is 90% of British Columbia, are not our trees, not our minerals, not our fossil fuels, not even our rivers and lakes and our staggering scenery, our mountains and coasts. It's us. We're it. And I think that it's become obvious to me, moving from a large center to a tiny place like this, that in a world that is becoming increasingly urbanized, where more and more people are conglomerating in fewer and fewer places, almost counterintuitively, those of us who stubbornly refuse to move to places like that, who cling to places like this, become increasingly important. Uh, we really heard it in a session yesterday that John Cars, who lives in Los Angeles, gave. This is a, a, an Academy Award winning filmmaker. And it, it, was, it was quite moving to hear him talk about why he feels so good here. And why so many of his peers living and working in towns like Los Angeles and London would love to come to places like Kaslow. So, don't forget that when you go home, that at the end of the day, you're it. I mean, the, the real value in your communities is us. And there, there's no shortage I've discovered over the last 36 hours of clever, creative, compassionate people in rural British Columbia. And, and we, not alone, together, can, can absolutely help shape our communities to become better and better places to live and work and play.